Most of us remember FDR as everything his predecessor wasn't. We think of Herbert Hoover as the bland, insensitive, do-nothing president who let America slide deeper and deeper into the Great Depression. And Roosevelt as the charismatic activist who rescued the nation. But the real history isn't that black and white. In 1920, 12 years before they run against each other for the presidency, Roosevelt is a huge fan of Hoover's. Hoover truly distinguished himself as head of food relief, especially after the war for a war-torn Europe. Roosevelt wrote to a friend, I think Hoover is a great wonder, and I would love to see him become president. You heard that right. For a brief time, Roosevelt lobbies hard for the guy we think of as his arch political rival, but only because he mistakenly assumes that Hoover is a Democrat. When FDR discovers his error, he backs off. But the two men are hardly the polar opposites we portray them as today. And what about the accepted view that Hoover, as president, did virtually nothing to save America's economy after the Depression hit, hoping the free market would correct itself? Hoover tried to stimulate the agricultural economy by buying up agricultural goods. He increased public work spending. He developed a major program of loans to financial institutions to try to shore them up. What about Roosevelt's bold program to pull America out of the Depression, his New Deal? We've all been taught that his public works projects, industry regulations, and financial relief systems turn the nation's economy around. Is that fact or fiction? That's still a hot topic of discussion. The New Deal was a failure at ending the Depression. As late as 1938, the unemployment rate was nearly as high as it had been when Roosevelt was elected in 1932. And the New Deal had been in effect for all of that. The truth is often painted in shades of gray. At first, Roosevelt's policies seemed to work, which explains why he wins re-election in 1936. The economy grew enormously. It grew at about 9 to 10 percent. Unemployment was sliced in half. It was still high, but it was much lower. Then you got a recession within the Depression in 1937, 1938, that actually caused the economy to sharply decline for a brief period. 